Hey, it's Tom. And Mike. From Take Time to Travel. Toronto is a beautiful city with so many different cool and unique neighborhoods. One of the most prestigious is Toronto's Yorkville neighborhood. It's filled with charming century-old Victorian homes, lots of luxurious shopping boutiques, and of course, lots of delicious restaurants. We're going to show you what we think are some of Yorkville's best restaurants and what else there is to see and do in this lovely downtown area of the city. So without further ado, let's get started with Yorkville's high-end Mink Mile. Its flowery sidewalks are lined with luxury shops and boutiques like Holt Renfrew, Dolce & Gabbana, Christian Dior, Prada's two-story flagship boutique, and there's even a car chase store on the Mink Mile. Just above these luxury retailers, there's also some tasty food. We made our way to the second floor, to the stylish Lebanese restaurant called Amal, just as it was opening. After you walk through the front doors, there's this lovely light and sleek bar area, but we're here for lunch, so we're going to sit in the dining room. We followed the hostess over to their beautifully designed, large and open concept main seating area. We sat down at our table and took in the incredible gold, blue and white painted ceiling. This is such a spectacular looking restaurant. We started with a couple of cold Stella beers, which hit the spot nicely. Then we had the seared halloumi cheese with tomatoes, cucumber and basil emulsion, which was served with warm, airy puffed pitas that ripped apart easily and tasted delicious. And for the main course, we got a lot of food. I got the beef pistachio kebab platter with house spice blend, bawaz pita, grilled tomatoes, serrano peppers, grilled onions, hummus and rice, as well as a side of tabbouleh salad. And Tom ordered the chicken shawarma which came with tomb, pickles and a bowl of rice. I really enjoyed my beef pistachio kebab platter. It was flavorful and tasted excellent. As was everything else that we tried at a mall. We really enjoyed our meal at a mall and thought that the service was excellent, the food tasted great and it was reasonably priced for Yorkville, especially with the beautiful atmosphere and this gorgeous painted ceiling. But let's keep going. Back on the Mink Mile, past luxury shops like Mont Blanc and boutiques like Gucci, Louis Vuitton and the world famous luxury jeweler Tiffany & Co. Further along the Mink Mile at the corner of Bloor and Queen's Park there's this stately building called the Lillian Massey Building which houses the Centre for Medieval Studies for the University of Toronto. But let's keep going and see what else there is. Just across Queen's Park Avenue there's the Royal Ontario Museum. Love how the modern crystal edition pokes out from the original stone architecture. The ROM has sprawling natural history and world cultures galleries, as well as a dinosaur exhibit. It's a great place to enrich your mind, or you can head across the street to the Park Hyatt Hotel's rooftop bar for a drink, which is what we decided to do. So let's head inside the hotel, through the main doors, and grab some drinks, as well as a bite to eat. There's Joni Restaurant on the Park Hyatt Hotel's main floor, located in this elegantly designed, grand and open space. But we're going to take the elevator up to the 17th floor, to the newly renovated rooftop bar called the Writer's Room Bar. They serve handcrafted cocktails and small bar bites, and it has floor-to-ceiling glass to help take in the stunning views of Toronto's iconic skyline. The Writer's Room Bar has a popular outdoor terrace, which is the perfect place to enjoy the warm weather and the picturesque city views. Unfortunately, we didn't get a spot on the patio, but we did get a nice table inside. We started with some steam whistle beers and got some complimentary popcorn. The steam whistle beers were served with frosty glasses and hit the spot nicely. To start, we shared the beef tatar with oyster emulsion, pickled shiitake and nori crisp. The beef tatar piled on top of the nori crisp tasted excellent. We both really enjoyed it. Then we ordered the Korean fried chicken which came on this tiered tower. The top layer had the Korean fried chicken. The middle layer had the various sauces and the cauliflower kimchi and the lower tier had the bib lettuce. 
What a great presentation. And it was delicious. After our tasty fried chicken and a couple more beers, we made our way back out on the rooftop terrace to enjoy some more of the spectacular cityscape views. What a gorgeous vantage point to see Toronto. It's a great spot to take a selfie. After we took our selfie, we headed back inside for some dessert. We got the matcha cheesecake. I thought it tasted amazing, but Tom doesn't like matcha, so he didn't like it as much, so I got to eat the entire thing. Once the sun had set, we went to the patio with the rest of the crowd so that we could enjoy the picturesque nighttime city views. We really enjoyed our drinks and snacks at the Park Hyatt's Rooftop Writer's Room Bar. It's a great spot for a drink and a little bite to eat, but if you're looking for dinner, we've got some more recommendations for you. Just up Avenue Road is a popular Italian restaurant called Soto Soto where celebrities have been seen. Let's head up the front stairs, through the restaurant's entryway, and make our way inside to check it out. After we checked in with the hostess, we followed her past the cozy bar area and over to the main floor dining room to our table. We sat down for our early reservation and had a look over the menu. It's recommended to make a reservation in advance because even though it isn't busy yet, it will be later this evening. To drink, I had the Golden Dream Cocktail, which tasted just like a creamsicle. And Tom had a rum and diet coke with a lime wedge. Tom quite enjoyed his rum and diet coke, which was on the strong side. I also really enjoyed the Golden Dream cocktail. It tasted just like a liquid creamsicle. To start, we shared the Buffalo Caprice mozzarella cheese from Campania and fresh heirloom tomatoes, as well as the buttermilk battered and deep fried shrimp and calamari with tartar sauce. Next, I had La Carbonara with artisanal Zacagni spaghetti tossed with crispy pork cheek eggs and Roman pecorino cheese. And Tom had the Capellini Nazzini with angel hair pasta, shrimp and arugula and cherry tomato sauce. Then we shared the Pesce del Giorno, the fish of the day, which was a whole fresh sea bass cooked on the grill and expertly seasoned and the Vitello della Nona, the Vito Scalapini with golden eggplants and fresh mozzarella and tomato sauce. After we ate that delicious food, Soto Soto really started to fill up. By the way, that was way too much food for two people. But there's always room for dessert. So we shared the pistachio cake, which just like everything else from Ristorante Soto Soto, tasted amazing. But let's keep going and make our way down the green and leafy Hazelton Avenue to explore some more of Yorkville. Hazelton is lined with lots of beautiful brick row homes as well as gorgeous century old Victorian homes with nicely landscaped and manicured front yards. In the spring, the street also has some beautiful blooming cherry blossoms, but let's keep going. Further along Hazelton Avenue, there's some professional office space for some businesses like investment advisors in these beautiful brick buildings here. There's also this cool building with the Heliconian Club. And just down from the Heliconian Club, near the bottom of the street, there's also lots of fine art galleries like the Ingram Gallery, the Mira Goddard Gallery, the Heffel Fine Art Auction House, and the Hazelton Fine Art Galleries. Just beside the galleries, there's also some high-end clothing stores and the entrance to Yorkville Village, a small, high-end shopping mall. And on Hazelton Avenue, you're also likely to see some high-end luxury cars. If you head down to Yorkville Avenue, you'll also see lots of luxury vehicles. You'll find Ferraris, Porsches, Audis, BMWs, and Range Rovers amongst the high-end fashion brands. Porsches and Ferraris seem to be everywhere on Yorkville Avenue. I guess it's no surprise with high-end shopping like Brunello Cuccinelli, Versace, and Chanel. There's even a Balenciaga store coming soon. Yorkville Avenue sure is a nice street to take a stroll along on a spring or summer day. And if you need some new shoes for your stroll, there's even a Christian Louboutin boutique. Right beside the boutique, there's this cool colorful street art adorned alcove covering multiple levels around the green patio of Sophia Restaurant and Bar. Love all the murals. What a wonderful little area. 
Yorkville Avenue even has a pub called the Oxley. But let's keep going and try some more delicious food. Further across Yorkville Ave, there's Toronto's Four Seasons Hotel, which has some tasty restaurants. Let's head in and try them out. Once you walk in the main doors, there's a cozy seating area with some pretty white blossom trees. But let's keep going around the corner, past the little shop and the lobby with the soaring ceiling and up the stairs to the second floor so that we can try Daniel Boulud's French brasserie called Café Boulud. After we checked in with the hostess for our early dinner reservation, we followed her through the lovely French brasserie, past the sleek looking bar and all of the booths over to the far side of the restaurant so that we could sit at our table right next to the floor to ceiling glass windows overlooking Yorkville Avenue and Bay Street. While we browsed the menu, we ordered some beer. I had a bottle of Heineken and Tom had the Lost Craft Diver City Lager. Tom liked his Diver City Lager and I quite liked my beer as well. Some complimentary baguette slices and some fancy looking butter were brought to the table followed by our appetizers. I got the French onion soup, which was served piping hot. And Tom had the beetroot salad with roasted beets, spicy greens, sheep milk cream, and pine nuts. Beets are one of Tom's favorite foods, so he really enjoyed his beetroot salad. I also really love French onion soup, and this bowl was delicious, although I forgot how hot it was and took a bite too soon. I definitely should have given it more time to cool down. For the mains, Tom got the BC halibut with fingerling potatoes, spring onion, leek, mushrooms, and beurre blanc, and I had the rabbit risotto with confit rabbit, fava beans, spring peas, ricotta, and nasturtium. For dessert, we got the rhubarb baked Alaska, which was flamed right at our table and came with yogurt yogurt and rhubarb ice cream, hibiscus sorbet, and almond dacquoise. We were told it looks much better when it's darker and the flame shows up better, but it tasted amazing. For our second dessert, we ordered the grapefruit givre with sesame halva, rose lacoum, and grapefruit sorbet. To go with dessert, I got the Metropolitan cocktail, served with a bubble made by a smoke gun. The Metropolitan has Casamigo Blanco, Cassis, Cranberry Apple, and Lime. This is such a cool looking cocktail. Love how the bubble breaks and the smoke pours out when you take a sip. And it tastes great too. The grapefruit givre also had great presentation and tasted excellent as well. If you like grapefruit, you'll love this dessert. We really enjoyed our delicious meal and the excellent service at Cafe Blued. After we were finished, the atmosphere in the brasserie started to change. The lights were dimmed and it started to fill up. But it's time for us to get up, keep going, and try some more delicious food in Toronto's Yorkville neighborhood, which we don't have to go very far for. We walked down the stairs to another lovely spot in the Four Seasons Hotel called D-Bar. Well, we actually came back on a different day. We came back on Valentine's Day for D-Bar's afternoon tea. In addition to the cool bar area, there's also this elegantly designed long expanse of the lounge section, which looks out onto Yorkville's Bay Street. Love the high ceilings. After we sat down, they brought out these lovely rose petals for our table which was a nice touch as we looked over the Valentine's Day afternoon tea menu. It had lots of tasty sounding options. Tom decided to try some of the Cronenberg 1664 beer instead of the tea that was included with the meal. After a short wait, our mouth-watering three-tiered serving tray arrived. The top tier has the savory treats. There's the deviled quail eggs, the mini chicken and waffles, lobster sliders, and house cured smoked salmon tarts. On the second tier, there's our favorite part, the sweet treats. There's the lavender eclairs, the raspberry and sakura mousse, chocolate passion, and the cute little pomme d'amour. The bottom tier has the fresh clotted cream and a couple of amazing jams. Then of course, there's the freshly baked plain and raisin scones. Everything tasted wonderful, and Tom especially loved the cute little house-cured smoked salmon tart. We really enjoyed our afternoon tea at D-Bar and our dinner at Cafe Blued, but let's keep going 
and make our way across Yorkville's Bel Air Street to try some more terrific food. We're going to try Yamato Japanese Restaurant, which has teppanyaki grills and a sushi bar. We came back at night for our dinner reservations. Let's head inside and check it out. As soon as you step inside the restaurant, the first thing you'll see is the sushi bar, with the chef's hard at work slicing fresh fish. But let's head around to the other side of the restaurant for the teppanyaki grills. Yamato has quite a few different teppanyaki grills where you're seated all around. We got a spot at the end of this teppanyaki grill and sat down. We got a couple of their Sapporo drafts, which was the perfect way to start the meal. We ordered some of the teppanyaki dinners, all of which include Japanese clear onion soup as well as a green salad with house dressing. We also got some sushi, the six piece negatoro maki and two pieces each of the tuna nigiri, salmon nigiri, scallop nigiri and marbled tuna nigiri and three pieces of salmon sashimi. After we finished our delicious sushi, it was time for the teppanyaki chef to come out and for the entertainment to begin. Steamed rice is included with the dinners, but as an add-on we ordered the teppan fried rice with vegetables and egg. To start cooking it, our teppanyaki chef bounced the egg up and down on his cooking spatula before he threw the egg up in the air and cracked it on its side. Then he even drew a heart with the egg white. Very cool. After the eggs were cooked, he threw the rice on the grill with some veg and put on a little show with the shakers. Once the fried rice was done, he scooped it into the bowl, flipped it around, then gave it to everyone who'd ordered the rice. Well, after a couple of attempts anyways. Next, it was time to cook the grilled vegetables, which were also included with the teppanyaki dinners. He poured some oil in the corner of the grill, which he lit with a match. Then he filled the piled onion slices with some more oil, before he used his bare hand to flip the flames from the corner over to the pile of onions, which lit up with a fiery bang. It's so cool how the flames are shooting up from the onion like a volcano. After that, it was time for our chef to cook the protein. Next to the teriyaki chicken, he gently placed the deep sea scallops on the grill and then proceeded to lay out a few portions of the shrimp for dinner. As the shrimps cooked in the lemon garlic butter and soy sauce, our chef flipped the scallops. Shortly after that, Mike's scallops were ready to be plated. Then it was time for our teppanyaki chef to start cooking the steak. As our chef began to work on our beef roll teppanyaki dinner, we started on our Hotatsugai deep sea scallop dinner grilled with garlic butter and soy sauce, as well as the imperial dinner with filet mignon, shrimps and teriyaki chicken. We both really enjoyed our teppanyaki dinners. Thank you chef, it tasted delicious. We also ordered the beef roll with thinly sliced prime ribeye beef wrapped around fried garlic and green onion. After the beef rolls were fully cooked, it was time for him to put them on our plate. We decided to each take half of the beef rolls to add to our already full teppanyaki dinner plates. We found the beef rolls good, but we preferred our other dinners. Overall, we really enjoyed our dinner and show at Yamato and will definitely be back. It's a great place for a special occasion. And if you're wondering, yes, we had leftovers, but let's keep going. Over to another one of Yorkville's busiest areas, Cumberland Street. As you walk down the sidewalk, you'll find lots of specialty stores and lovely little boutiques, as well as some restaurants, coffee shops, beauty salons, and spas. Just across the street, there's the Yorkville Rock and the village of Yorkville Park. The park is surrounded by modern glass towers, and it has this cool wooden walkway, as well as this steel, industrial-looking pergola-covered walkway, just on the other side of which are these beautiful cherry blossom trees that were in full bloom and had lots of people relaxing underneath them. The village of Yorkville Park sure is a beautiful-looking park to hang out at on a sunny spring or summer day and with the warm weather it can get pretty busy if you keep going further on this side of the park there's an area to wander through the pine trees and just a little bit past the park on cumberland street there's bar reina which has some delicious mediterranean cuisine let's head inside and try it out 
We walked up the stairs, through the front door, and past these purple curtains over to the restaurant's hostess desk. Bar Reina does have this cool looking back terrace, but unfortunately, we weren't able to get a seat. So we followed the hostess through the bustling restaurant, past the bar, and up the stairs to the second floor and to our table. To drink, I had a bottle of the Mill Street Organic Beer, and Tom had the Menabria Draft. To eat, we had the manchego and cauliflower croquettes with Spanish aioli, which tasted exceptional. Followed by two delicious lamb baklava with katefi, braised lamb shank, burnt honey saffron aioli, and pistachio. As well as the lamb meatball pot pie with house-made lamb meatballs, feta, pomegranate, tomato, and flatbread. And the full chicken shawarma platter with a roast chicken, flatbread, Turkish salsa, pickled turnip, pink lentil, and kale tabbouleh and tzatziki. Overall, we thoroughly enjoyed our meal at Bar Reina, especially Especially the chicken shawarma, the lamb baklava, and the manchego and cauliflower croquettes. But let's walk off a little bit of that food and check out the nearby cute little Old York Lane, which is lined with restaurants, shops, boutiques, and you'll also find a lively New Zealand style pub called Hemingway's Restaurant. It's a popular spot with a huge year-round rooftop terrace that spans multiple different areas and levels. After we checked in with the hostess, we followed her and wound our way through the busy patio over to our table. We sat down at our high top table against the wall and had a look over the menu. To drink, we had a couple pints of brickwork cider with glasses of ice on the side. While we waited for our appetizer, we sipped on our tasty brickwork ciders. After a short wait, our appetizer arrived. We got this massive plate of onion rings. For the mains, I got the chicken fajitas on a sizzling platter of green and red peppers, sweet onions, and served with all the fixings and hot tortillas. Tom got the fish and chips with crispy battered haddock and a massive plate of fries with tartar sauce and coleslaw. Overall, we really enjoyed our meal at Hemingway's. It has great food and great value for the Yorkville neighborhood. Well, we really enjoyed going to all these amazing patios and restaurants in Yorkville, and hopefully it gave you some ideas on what to do and where to eat. We also really enjoyed making today's video, and we hope you enjoyed watching it too. If you did, we'd really appreciate it if you'd like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications on our future videos. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm, and it helps our channel to grow. And remember, take time to travel. Catch you on the next one.